Telarad in five minutes. To get to Arad we must leave Jerusalem before dawn. We'll go down through the Shefela and along the coastal plain. The insurance for our car doesn't allow us to head through the hills because that's Palestinian Authority territory. In the dry summer the Judean hills collect the dew that comes from the Mediterranean. When we reach the flatter Negev it'll be much drier. When we turn east again we head through the outliers of the Judean hills where the high country of Judah falls to the Negev. When at last we turn north again we head up the broad valley that's the southern route into the hill country of Judah. The tell is just to the left of the road, a low flat hill. Actually the hill is horseshoe shaped and the Bronze Age city occupied the whole of this horseshoe. As you can see it all gathers in one lowest focal point. At that point there was a cistern to collect the runoff and provide water in the dry season. The cistern is deep. The walls you saw in the previous shot were modern. These are the Bronze Age walls of the cistern. Unworked stone which was once plastered with lime to make it waterproof and keep in the precious commodity. Before we visit the Iron Age Israelite fortress on the hill, we'll briefly visit the Middle Bronze Age city. There are several gates in the walls because the Middle Bronze Age was a peaceful time. The layout of the houses and streets may suggest planning, though some of us are not so sure. Take a look at an aerial photo or a plan of the city and make up your own mind. The Bronze Age walls are solid with half round towers at intervals along them. In the distance you can see the low hills that are the beginning of Judah proper. At the highest point of the tell is the Iron Age fortress, a much smaller population in this period and mainly for protection against invasion from the south rather than a working city. The tell stands beside the road leading up the long flat valley which cuts north into the hills. The walls and gateway are smaller than the walls of a major city but still an impressive defence. They've been reconstructed by the archaeologists the ancient remains are marked by a line of cement along the bottom of the current walls. The reason for our visit to Arad is this temple. It has a large courtyard and a massive altar and a small temple building at the other end. It was constructed in the time of the Hebrew kings. The courtyard was large enough for the size of the garrison. The altar is interesting. As commanded in Exodus 27.1 it's five cubits square and three cubits high. It's built of uncut stone as Exodus 20 25 commands over a clay and rubble core. There's a channel to collect the blood and the corners have been broken so we can't tell if it was a horned altar as Exodus 27 verse 2 might suggest or whether the horns have been broken off deliberately when the temple was decommissioned as Amos 3:14 might hint. At the other end of the courtyard is the temple building. It's a long narrow building with a broad door in the long wall and opposite the doorway a small room with two incense altars laid down at the entrance. This area was not destroyed but decommissioned and then filled in. Two stone tablets like in the Ark of the Covenant were also laid flat and covered, maybe at the time of the reform of Josiah or of Hezekiah when all of the outlying temples and sanctuaries were commanded destroyed and worship centered in Jerusalem. But for centuries in this place people had worshipped the God who made everything. So when the king called for the temple to be destroyed they still respected it. <laughs> 